Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This week's video is a special request to talk about my favorite art supplies. So I thought I would just show you guys a bit of what I have in my art desk, what I've been drawn to, what I'm excited to learn how to use, and maybe even show you a bit of how I've been using them. So with that, let's keep it short, let's keep it sweet, and let's get right into it. All right, the glasses are coming on, we mean business. So this is the corner of my apartment that I have dedicated to my art studio. And it's a standard Ikea desk here with a bunch of drawers and I just have a bunch of art supplies in them. I watched a couple other art creators do videos similar to this and it's so beautiful and exciting to watch them because they have such a wide variety of things that they use. And maybe I will surprise myself as we get into it, but I don't have a lot of variety and part of it's coming from a sustainability mindset of I'm really trying to use all the art supplies that I already have before diving into others. But it's also coming from a financial standpoint because I don't have the money right now to explore with a bunch of products that I might not like. So when it really comes down to it, I tend to buy products that I know I enjoy. That's just my full transparency where I'm coming from. But also on top of that, I have noticed about myself that it's not so much about the product, it's about how much I use it and get to know it because there have been some products that I buy and I do not like them right at the beginning, but then I force myself to use them because I spent money on them and I want to use them instead of wasting them. And by the time I run out of that product, I've kind of fallen in love with it. So to start the video, I thought we would go over notebooks and sketchbooks. So I have a couple, no surprise, that I'm working in. If you've been watching this channel for a couple weeks now, then you probably know this is the first sketchbook that I started the channel with. And this is my favorite sketchbook. It's the Soho Urban Artist Sketchbook in Gray. The reason I was drawn to it is that it has a flexible cover. So I can just throw this in a bag and not worry about getting it all dented up, I don't know. And I was really drawn to the binding because when you open it to any page, you're gonna get a flat lay. And more than that, I was really just intrigued by the price. It's very affordable. The size, which is smaller than the first sketchbook I was working in, but large enough to encourage me to work larger. But also the gray pages. I had never used tone paper in my life and I thought it would just be something fun to try. It was maybe a little risky because it's a lot of pages if I ended up not liking the sketchbook. But to my own surprise, I have absolutely fallen in love with it. I've fallen in love with my color palette in here. And so now I'm curious if I put these colors on a white page, if I would even like them anymore. I don't know. So this is my favorite sketchbook and this is the one that I really recommend to people. The paper has a very smooth finish. It's really absorbent, so I will say, I do a lot of Posca pen and marker work in here, and I think that that is a bad idea because it sucks up all of the ink. If you're gonna be using markers or acrylic paint pens, you really probably should buy a sketchbook that's made for markers because it won't absorb the ink. It'll take longer to dry, and you'll save a lot of materials in the end. But since I had already bought this, I'm just, I'm, I'm making my life simple and I'm just making art. All of that being said, this is my favorite sketchbook. When I bought this, I bought its sister sketchbook, this one. It is a Soho brick gray hardcover. I painted the edges color, but it's a hardcover sketchbook and it's cardboard on the front. And then it has a similar spine so that it flat lays. And this is a smaller size. And I'm also not done with this one, I have a bit left. And I haven't been in this one for a while, actually. I kind of got burnt out on it, but I need to dive back in so I can finish it. But I actually don't like this one and I don't recommend it because it feels really cheap. I have completely dented and warped the cover just because I throw it in my bag so frequently. But the thing that I do not like is the paper texture. 
And once again, that's on me because this is meant for coloring pencils. And I just don't like the way that water interacts with it because since it probably is more of a construction paper pulp, it's not meant for water. So I'm not mad at the sketchbook for that, but I just wouldn't recommend this for how I have been working. This sketchbook is the only sketchbook I've ever completed. This is the only sketchbook flip through on my channel. It is a tiny art creation, cheap sketchbook that I got from Jerry Artorama. I think they have these at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, anywhere. But I was drawn to this because I needed like eight more dollars for free shipping. So it was an impulse buy. But the size of the pages is so small that I felt like I could just doodle in this and not be hard on myself. And that's what happened. So I do actually recommend this one because it is so approachable. It's a great price point. Rubber band is really strong, comes in a bunch of colors, a bunch of sizes. If you care at all about posting on Instagram, I think that this is a fun size because if you do just one half spread, it's a square. And so it's going to look great on your grid. Food for thought. So I actually do recommend these, especially because the whole point of my sketchbook practice right now is iterating making work frequently, not spending too much time on things. So a sketchbook like this makes a lot more sense for my current practice than something like the super nice Strathmore sketchbook. To finish up the sketchbooks, I'm still working in this green sketchbook. It is a moleskin sketchbook. I haven't talked about this one because this sketchbook is not an impressive sketchbook. This is a sketchbook I go to when I need to doodle something. And the paper, the paper has a yellow tint to it and it has very thin, almost um, scripture-like pages. But I will say it's been really fun to do ink work. The other thing that looks really nice in here are crayons. So I've actually been having fun in the sketchbook, but I've, I've just not been taking it very seriously because I don't like how thin the pages are. And there's so many of them, it's really intimidating to consider finishing a sketchbook with this many pages. Leaving the sketchbook notebook category, we have the paper zone. This is something newer that I've been doing because I've been wanting to have more originals available for sale or to give away in a birthday card or give to friends and family and loved ones. And so I've been buying paper singles, sheets, packs, and sometimes at your local craft store, they have the section of paper and it's the huge full sheets. It'll just be racks of them. Sometimes they'll take old paper or paper that's not selling and cut it into smaller pieces and then just sell it cheaply in a stack. And so I've purchased that before. This is two different stacks. And so I unfortunately don't actually know what the paper is, but I just want to recommend the concept of buying single paper. And sometimes it can be stuff that you love. It's very precious and you can spend your time on it. You should also feel free to simply doodle. Like I have things in here that are just what I would have put on my sketchbook anyway. But since they're on these sheets, I can put them up on my Etsy shop or I can do an art fair and sell them there. None of these are currently listed. I'm realizing I actually forgot I had all these. So maybe I'll upload some. Let's do one more. So paper like this is great, or you can buy a full sheet, cut it yourself. I have these tiny little bins I got at Target for like $2 and I just leave the stack of them in there that I can pull out at any point. It's also really helpful because if you ever do a sketchbook spread that you absolutely hate, you can just take some paper and tape it in on top to hide it and you could better integrate it than I have here. But I don't know, it's just nice to have some art paper around that you can use in different ways. So now let's talk about writing materials, pencils, crayons, all of that good stuff. Here is the little vase that sits next to my lamp. It is filled with a lot of the same thing. It has the Jelly Roll 10 white pen. In my opinion, the only white ink pen worth worth buying is the 10. And I have a ton of these in here because I plow through them. It's something I wanna look into in the future. Like, is there a refillable 
Is there a refillable white fountain pen that would be better than all of these? Because I don't need to buy the, the pen. Then when it comes to my black ink, I have two that I use. And this is a good example of, I don't know if these are the best pens or if I've just worked with them enough that I love them. They are both by Sharpie. They're the S gel pen. I have the 30, the point 38. It's a very thin nibbed black pen. And then I also have it in point seven, which to me is really juicy. Both of these are pens I would love to have a more sustainable option for in the future because I have already burned through multiple packs of these, which is just not sustainable, but I am in love with their payoff. So I just need to invest in a really great refillable pen option instead since I am using them so frequently. And then for fun at the art store, I bought Jelly Rolls in glitter. These are two different ones. The first one is more of a shimmer, like a aluminum metallic. The second one is a glitter and there's definitely specks of glitter and this thing shines to high heaven. So I like to use these sparingly for special spreads or details and I haven't gone through even one of these yet. So they're just in here. And then I have two mechanical pencils and I only own two of these and I'm constantly running around my home trying to find them because I forget to put them in their home. But that's what's in here, it's very standard. I, I also have like some Sharpie pens, but this is for like my grocery list. I don't use those for art. So I'm gonna start off with the two products that I use all the time that if you've watched my videos, you've seen before, which starts with the Posca pens. This is my single favorite art supply, my favorite art material. I will be absolutely shocked if anything becomes better than these to me. They last so long, even when I'm using them frequently. The only time I don't like to use them is when I have a large space to fill in, but that's only because I specifically buy only this size, which is the 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter bullet PC5M. I have been slowly collecting these. I bought my first one maybe four years ago, and I've just absolutely fallen in love with them since then. And I don't think that they're as pricey as you think. It can be a lot when you buy them in bulk, but they are really something that you collect. And right now I've been gravitating towards these blues. And then I also have some nice warmer tone colors. I also have this, I don't even know what to call this, jewel tones maybe? But I've been collecting these for several years now and I have a pretty good spread. But the reason I specifically love these Posca pens is because of the opaque payoff of the material. So if you don't know what they are, essentially Posca pens are a fiber nib to the marker that you hold down and you shake and it activates a cartridge inside that is filled with a fluid acrylic paint. So once you activate it and the nib is wet, you can then draw, but you're not drawing with ink, you're drawing with paint. And this is great for multiple reasons. Firstly, because when it dries, it dries this beautiful satin finish, kind of like an acrylic gouache, and it will not budge. It will not reactivate with water. I really like it because it creates a non-porous surface on top of your paper so that you can then use markers on top and pen on top, and it will stop the ink from absorbing into the paper and losing its brightness. Aside from just the barrier, it's so opaque because it's paint instead of ink. So I can just get my point across in one swipe. For me, it's really helped to optimize my art style. But on the opposite side of that, I am also noticing that my art style is starting to veer a bit more into a graphic cartoony area. And I think that's because of the product that I'm using. The other drawing instrument that I am obsessed with is the Tombow dual tip marker. It comes with two sides. The side that I use most frequently is a soft brush pen. And then the side I hardly utilize is a hard felt nib. There are many reasons why I love these markers, mainly that they are easily available, they are affordable, and they last a long time. I have been using them daily for my 100 days of sketching in the morning practice and I have not thrown a single one 
away since starting that. So that's three months of making art. And lastly, for drawing supplies, I've not shown these a lot because I'm not using them in my current sketchbooks with the gray paper. These are basically an adult version of a crayon. And as a child, I did not like crayons because I didn't like the waxiness of them, especially when you would go, you know, to like a big boy restaurant or one of those places where you'd get the kids menu and they'd give you the three crayons and they were mostly wax and so you couldn't get any color payoff and you couldn't blend the colors. And I'm clearly an artist since I was a child because I would be on that menu trying to do a gradient fade to fill out the french fries on the burger tray in the bottom right corner next to the maze. And it just, it was horrible. So I always thought I hated crayons. Yes, even Crayola, I didn't like how waxy they are. Then I found these at the art store and like so many of my other art supplies, I started by just buying one or two and I brought them home and immediately could not, could not believe how great these are. They are buttery, they are soft. A common theme that you'll notice with me in my art practice is that I like things that are opaque and satin and thick and milky. I just, I want, I want as much payoff as I can get on the page for as minimal effort as possible because I'm all about optimization baby i'm a busy girl and i want to be in there doing my art practice I, i'm not meticulously blending my watercolors it's a very different approach <laughs> to my art practice and the last art supply i want to talk about are the acrylic gouache holbein paint tubes this is my holy grail product this is the product that made me want to make art again this is the product that made me show up for myself for the first time in a very, very, very long time. And I know that's a lot to say about a product, but I had been playing with paints for a long time. When I was in college, I did a lot of watercolor painting and I was always furious with how thin the paints were. And I used to get in trouble a lot because I'd waste a lot of product because I wouldn't use that much water. So once I described my frustrations to one of my professors, they encouraged me to try gouache, which is kind of an in-between of acrylic paint and watercolor. It's opaque like an acrylic and it dries down a bit more like an acrylic, but it's activated by water. So with traditional gouache, you can actually go back in with water, rehydrate it and keep moving your piece. So I worked with gouache for a while and I bought this, which went viral. Uh, during the pandemic on Amazon and it's called jelly gouache, but it's actually not a different type of gouache. Right now I haven't used them in a long time and so they're cracked like the desert. Uh, but basically what would happen is I would just spray water on them, leave it for probably 48 hours to rehydrate, go with a toothpick, revive them, and then while I'm actively using this, if I'm working on a painting or if this was my top art product at the moment, I would just keep hydrating it every couple days, keep a moist towel on top. But for me, I didn't like this so much. And part of it is definitely the color palette. These are a lot more vibrant than I tend to be drawn to. But I was also getting really frustrated with not being able to let it dry and go on top. And I've come a long way with acrylic, but this discovery phase of my life was before I knew how to properly use paint and I hated acrylic paint and then I bought one tube of Holbein acrylic gouache. I don't have the same tube but it was this exact color because I told you already that I'm obsessed with pigeony blues. found this blue it dries down a bit grayer than it looks on the swatch and it rocked my world because this is an acrylic gouache meaning it's more like acrylic paint. So this is velvety. It is a paint that mixes very well with water, but it cannot be reactivated once it dries. The most important thing about that that I need to tell you right now so you do not waste any of your money like I did is that if you pour this paint into a palette, you have to use all of it. If you squeeze it out into like a travel palette, you cannot rehydrate it with water ever. This is plastic it'll be gone. I made that mistake thinking that this was like a regular gouache, squeezed it out into a travel thing, hardened into a little tiny pebble, and I was so sad. But the reason that this product was it for me is because of how satiny it is on the page. 
It is opaque. You can do one swipe, let it dry. It is just so buttery smooth, beautiful, game changer. Thank y'all so much for tuning in this week to see what I'm up to in my little home art studio. Please leave a comment down below about what you would like to see next time. I've been bouncing a lot between these making art for a week videos and these drawing with me in my sketchbook videos. And I've been getting a lot more traction on walking you through the sketchbooks. And I'm just so curious about why that is. Is it the algorithm or is it all of you watching? I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, but even more than that, I would love it if you would leave a comment down below let me know what you would like to see and be as specific as possible because maybe I will be doing your recommendation next week. So with that, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic whatever day of the week it is because I know that I am. Okay, bye.